Hi, welcome to the morning. This is Johannes Krajala. I'm from Nokia Technologies and presenting the how you do multi platform stereoscopic 360 video with the OpenGL. So, Nokia Technologies is part of the bigger Nokia, so there is the network side doing the mobile networks, and then there is the technology side we are focusing on technology R&D and the, uh, licensing business. So we are much smaller and quite new, so we are but we still have kind of startup feeling there. So very nice, to, nice place to work. Uh, our first product is out has been uh, about a year ago already. So it's an also camera. So shoots stereoscopic 360 video. It has eight lenses and each of them is 2K and it also has uh, eight microphones so we can get spatial audio there and surround sound. It's about human head size and it weighs 9.3 uh, pounds. But I'm not here to talk only about the camera. We have a full software suit. So starting from the capture, where we capture the video and audio, then we have post-production tools, which are part of the pipeline. You can get them online. So you, with the post-production tools, you can do color correction and uh, automated stitching and that kind of things. Then we have the also live, which enables you to stream content from another place to, uh, to the well, multiple users. So, for example, a uh, basketball came from another city to another city, so in real time. And then we have the player SDK, which allows you to create your own experiences in VR. So, I'm here to talk about that. So, yeah, the SDK is a multi platform SDK, so we support all the major HMDs out there, and then we have a it's pretty high-end SDK, so we can uh, render 4K per each eye. And we have the spatial audio, as I mentioned before. We also support this live streaming uh, through MPEG Dash. And then we have, uh, it's not, not just the software development kit, but we also have pretty cool examples, so you can create your own uh, experiences easily. So there is a, you can just throw in videos and you get pretty nice layout, create and select the videos and just customize the UI to your field so you can add your own logos there and what not. <coughs> Some small feature list, not, not everything, but we support different kinds of projections, normal acre rectangular, then we support also Lambert project, projection, which, is, uh, which gives you more resolution on top and bottom. Uh, and the correct and all. Then we have the CubeMap support, also CubeMap videos, and we do the rendering in OpenGL and OpenGL ES, and we are also investigating now the work and what kind of benefit it will give us with the video decoding. We have the head track audio, which is our custom also audio format, which is played with the MP4 VR data structure which supports normal uh, mp4 files with the USB resolution for everything but also on windows and uh, some android devices we support two times uhd so you can 4k per eye resolutions we, do, we also support the streaming with the mpeg dash there is uhd resolution and adaptive bitrate so we can scale like according to the network bandwidth and we have simple analytics in place so you can see how the users are using your content. This is kind of the simple architecture what we give with the SDK. So there are examples with, with the major uh, HMDs out there. And this is our SDK. Uh, so it has the audio and rendering and playback control interfaces. This is where we use the OpenGL and OpenGL ES. So we have a, this kind of application framework, which is kind of a mini game engine. And so you can do rendering with UI elements and those kind of things for your application. Then we are using the rendering 
uh, OpenGL, ESN, OpenGL, or the rendering in our SDK. It's a native C++ API, and we also have a Unity plugin for it, so you can try with that with more uh, experimental use cases with the Unity. So I want to fly into code. Um, this is the C++ API, what, what I'm explaining here. So first we create the, create the instance of the player with you know, parameters and you can choose your rendering backend. Then we can get the interfaces to the audio, rendering and playback controls. Initialize the whatever HMD you are using here in uh, it's Google VR. And then we just call load video and play and we can start decoding the video, the full 360 video. And the rendering is done with the, this is the, this is a simple rendering loop. So we first update the HMD to get all the parameters up to date, like the head orientation and uh, acquire frames from the swap buffers of the HMD. So <clears throat> after getting that, we send those to our SDK and then we can render for both eyes. After finishing the rendering, you can put custom rendering stuff here, so that enables you to do some multi, uh, some mixed reality rendering stuff. Here is a simple example, just putting some UI elements on top, on top of the video. So, <coughs> from the SDK, no matter what HMD you are using, we still have uh, this kind of simple interface, so you can use the OpenGL to render. So you, this is a slight optimization there, putting scissors there and uh, rendering only to the viewport. So then we can draw, we just have to pass the uh, orient, uh, this projection matrices to get the rendering right. So that's pretty much all what you have to do for the rendering. Uh, we are not sticking on the, only to this release and have it fixed, but we are developing all the time the SDK, so we, we are looking into mixed reality use cases and adding more stuff to help developing those kind of applications. And we are want to increase also the resolution of the rendering, so beyond the hardware decoder limits. And uh, we are a member of Kronos, so we are following all the standards and we are very excited to be part of also the open e open XR and that will help us to simplify all our SDK as well. So that's pretty much it. If you have some questions I'm happy to answer. Anyone have any questions? I also have a demo here so I can show that afterwards.